Hello and welcome to Amazing Tales from off and on Connecticut's beaten path. I'm Mike Allen, here with another story about historically significant people, places, and events from Connecticut's long and fabled past. Today on Amazing Tales, there's been a raging debate over COVID vaccination shots. The inventor of perhaps the most famous vaccine of all time, the polio vaccine, was Jonas Salk. Well, his nephew, Eric Salk, knew him well, and he lives in Connecticut. He's my guest on this edition of Amazing Tales. So stay tuned for what would polio vaccine inventor Jonas Salk think about COVID? He called him Uncle Jonas. And that would be the proper salutation if your uncle was the inventor of the polio vaccine, Jonas Salk. And so that's what Eric Salk called his uncle as he grew up through childhood and into adulthood. Eric now lives in Connecticut, and he comes from a family steeped in medical science. Not only was his uncle famous, but so was his father. We'll have more on that later. Today, Eric Salk is one of the frontline healthcare workers in the COVID battle, fighting from his position as an emergency room physician at Charlotte Hungerford Hospital in Torrington. We had the opportunity to speak recently, and ordinarily I try to make these podcast episodes timeless, that is, so they're never outdated. Well, this one's going to be an exception. COVID is here now as this gets published in January of 2022, and Eric Salk's comments on vaccination against COVID are indeed timely and interesting. There are several parts to this episode, and we'll start with the Salk family itself. Eric says that his uncle Jonas was one of three sons born to Eastern European immigrants in New York City, parents who understood the value of education and made sacrifices to make schooling available to their sons. They were the sons of immigrant parents from Europe who worked in you know, sort of sweatshops at the Lower East Side and put their kids through school. That was, that was education was certainly primary for them. Like many others, Jonas Salk and his brothers didn't have the privilege of attending exclusive private schools. Rather, they were a product of the country's largest public school system, New York City. Eric says that Jonas did well in school, but also received a lot of motivation at home. He was apparently a very studious, very serious child, but his, you know, his parents, and particularly his mother, Dora, um, I know was pretty hard driving and, and pretty determined that her you know, sons would have a leg up. Eric says that his uncle Jonas faced the same pressures at home that many of us have experienced to pursue a specific career. I think she was actually more interested in him being a lawyer, but he sort of ended up being a doctor, which was okay too, I guess. You'd have to say that the brilliance gene ran throughout the entire Salk family. All three sons ended up in medical fields, virology, psychology, and animal medicine. Eric's dad, Lee Salk, became the psychologist. In fact, he was a famous child psychologist practicing in New York City. Wrote a number of books about that, and he had a sort of a regular column in McCall's Magazine and, and television spots. Lee Salk was credited with discovering the calming effect that the sound of a heartbeat has on infants. By the time Eric was born, his uncle's vaccine, unveiled in 1955, had already been around for six years. But as he grew up in New York City, he was fortunate to be able to spend considerable amounts of time with Jonas Salk, who had moved to California on the West Coast. Largely, I think, funding through March of Dimes had established the Salk Institute out in La Jolla. And so he was based out there, but he spent a lot of his time in New York as well. And so, you know, as I was growing up, we would see him often. By this time, Jonas was married to his second wife. And Eric remembers those years quite well. His second wife was Francois Gillot who had lived with Picasso for many years, and they had, uh, and they lived together in New York and, and in Paris and out in La Jolla. So during the 70s, 80s, we, we spent a lot of time together. So how did the polio vaccine come to be? Eric says that his uncle had gone to medical school at Mount Sinai in his native New York City, but then went out to the University of Pittsburgh. There he joined a lab and was part of an influenza vaccine team. But after a time, he branched off into work on the polio vaccine with his own dedicated lab group. The team made the breakthrough in 1955, and almost instantaneously, the name Jonas Salk was everywhere. Eric says that 
Jonas was a rather unassuming man who got placed on a public pedestal in the years when media attention was still in its infancy. In an interview with the legendary journalist Edward R. Murrow, Murrow said, quote, Young man, a great tragedy has befallen you. You've lost your anonymity. Eric said that's just about right. He sort of got thrust into the spotlight and became this sort of symbol for, you know, I don't know, science and everything, you know, that was possible. And that media spotlight focused squarely on Jonas Salk, leaving some others perhaps in the shadows. It was a big project that involved many people, and I think they, there may have even been some resentment that he got so much of the attention, but I think there was just something about the way the media you know, wanted to focus on this particular hero. Nevertheless, Eric Salk says his uncle's work and perseverance certainly deserved the attention it received. He drove his lab. He was very determined in when he would get something, you know, have an idea and feel confident about it and pursue it kind of doggedly. In that same Edward R. Murrow interview, Salk was asked a relatively simple question, but it seemed to bewilder him in a way. The question was, do you plan to patent the vaccine technology? His answer was a clear no, with this now famous quote. You could no sooner patent the sun, it's, this belongs to all humanity. For Eric Salk, you might think that growing up with an uncle who helped tame the number one health fear of the 1900s would be simply amazing. Yet in speaking with him, you learn that it's actually something that has become even more important to him as time goes on. You don't know any, anything else growing up. It's just what it is. I, in a way, I sort of appreciate it more and more as I, you know, my work is I run into people who talk about their experience before the vaccine and when it came out and being, you know, one of the polio pioneers that, you know, the, the kids in the first trials. So what kind of person was Jonas Salk? He was a very sweet and soft-spoken person, but, you know, with a sparkle in his eye and, and loved to talk and loved to listen and loved to hear about what was going on in everybody else's life. Even though Eric had not been born when the vaccine was first made public, he did have the benefit of knowing Jonas Salk at an important point in his uncle's life. During the years that I knew him best, he was spending more time being kind of looking at the big picture and, and much more philosophical and thinking about where the human race was in its sort of evolutionary path. When Jonas Salk was alive, he was adamant in his view that everybody should get the polio vaccine. Indeed, the vaccine's been credited with wiping out polio for all intents and purposes from the face of the earth. And that's what puzzles Eric Salk today. The fact that in light of COVID's potentially life-threatening outcome, he doesn't understand why anybody would oppose it or, more to the point, question the science behind it. I asked him that, knowing his uncle as well as he did, what he thought Jonas Salk might think of today's opposition to COVID vaccines. He said he was quite confident that he would wonder where the pushback was coming from in terms of logic. It is obviously, to a large extent, sort of, politically and ideologically driven, and that, I, I think, something that he would have been pretty upset about. Eric says his uncle's worldview was cast in the principles he held dear. He believed in science, and that science is, is the pursuit of truth and doesn't belong in the political realm. He says his uncle would have been disappointed to see science and scientists dismissed so readily. Personally, Eric looks at the current situation and then thinks about what vaccines like the one his uncle developed have meant. He is somewhat incredulous that there's any opposition to them. These technologies, I mean, development of vaccines is part of how we've evolved as a species in a way. He calls vaccines tools for survival. And he says that their developments in the same category of importance to us as a species as when our ancient ancestors first used just two legs, stood erect, and began walking. At the emergency room hospital where he works in Torrington, Eric Salk says that the numbers are overwhelming. They show that the persons who need the ICU beds the longest, stay in the hospital the longest, use ventilators the most, and require other high-flow oxygen devices are those who did not get vaccinated. He says the reports you hear in the media are true. Medical staff are suffering from exhaustion, fatigue, disillusionment, and staff shortages. The people that are requiring the most resources and putting all of us at the greatest risk are the ones who made a choice to not get vaccinated. At one point in time, Eric says that he tried to discuss the vaccine issue with so-called anti-vaxxers when they came into his emergency room, unable to breathe, seeking treatment and help. 
Now he says it's become so political with entrenchment setting in that it's hardly worth the effort anymore. It's become one of those things that the discussions are, are usually not fruitful on, on either side. And so I think most of us have just you know, we sort of shy away from engaging in, in the discussion. One of his own pet peeves is to hear people say that getting a vaccine infringes on their personal freedom. He bristles at that after witnessing firsthand how their decision not to get a vaccine impacts the personal freedoms of his staff. He says that's one key reason why so many people are leaving the medical field. They're simply fed up. He says, though, that he's seen in some of those same individuals straining to capture a breath on a ventilator in the ICU, at one point or another, a look of remorse in their eyes. Was it like this when his uncle's polio vaccine was introduced? Eric says there's always some reluctance, but not like we see it now. I think there was much less at that time, and I think overwhelmingly, you know, people in positions of power you know, were supportive of this process. One of the lasting tributes to Uncle Jonas Salk was the creation of the Salk Institute in La Jolla, California. Eric says the March of Dimes organization provided much of the initial seed financing, and it turned into a place that kind of mirrors Jonas Salk's own big picture thinking. It brought together people from various different disciplines, you know, not just the bio biologic sciences, but chemistry and physics and musicians and philosophers, and, and uh, the idea was to collaborate and think big thoughts. And while he's not personally involved with Institute operations, his stepmother remains on the board, and his cousin, Jonas Salk's son, is very involved. Eric does keep up, though, on their contributions to society. Kind of an amazing place where great thinkers come together, and they are, have been very prolific in terms of work, especially around aging and dementia, and, and immunology and cancer research. A lot, a lot of stuff comes out of there. And what about Jonas Salk's legacy on Eric Salk? What are the lessons he's kept with him over these years? Well, first, he appreciates the fact that Jonas Salk was a true listener who wanted to hear as much about you as he wanted to speak about himself. Part of it is curiosity. You know, he followed his curiosity and, and, and that drove him. And he'll always treasure his big picture thinking about really important concepts how we've evolved as a species in relation to the world and other species. In the final analysis, Eric looks to his uncle and his accomplishments as a constant beacon of hope for dealing with the current COVID crisis, one that he hopes we will see through in a concerted fashion. I would certainly wish for a, sometimes that simpler time when an issue like this wasn't so politicized. But, um, but we'll move forward and, and, and hopefully get through this um, together. <laughs> That's it for this episode of Amazing Tales from Off and On Connecticut's Beaten Path. I want to thank my guest for this episode, Eric Salk, nephew of Jonas Salk, inventor of the polio vaccine, and in his own right, an emergency room physician at Charlotte Hungerford Hospital in Torrington, Connecticut, on the front lines of the COVID battle. Please follow me at my main podcast website, amazingtalect.podbean.com. Also, in between episodes, you can check out my Facebook page at Amazing Tales CT. You'll find some great family photos of the socks on that page. Plus, I'd love hearing from you, and you could always send me an idea for a story you'd like me to look into. If you liked what you heard, spread the word with your family and friends. See you next time here on Amazing Tales from off and on Connecticut's beaten path. I'm Mike Allen. Be safe and stay healthy. <laughs> Amazing Tales from Off and On Connecticut's Beaten Path is a production of True North Associates, LLC.